five. You know, this is coding round. Yeah, I know. Uh, this is a coding round. Yeah, that's continue. We can solve the Python coding questions. One, write a function to return the sum of elements in a matrix. Consider both positive and negative numbers can exist in the input values. Sharing the input and expected output in chat window. Yeah, sure. Uh, before that, I can share my screen and uh, I can open any of the IDE, online IDE for the Python and uh, we can get started this one. Uh, let me know once you are able to see my screen. I'm sharing my screen now. So I'm just opening the Python one. So this is the default one. I'm erasing it. I'm sorry. I'm writing the input and output. Eight, nine. Okay. So we need to get the uh, sum of our base, right? And one constraint is. In first eight, it should have, input should have. Input can have positive. Or in negative values. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so this is the input. So first to solve this one on I can I can consider it as a multi dimensional array. So I can go with down first a kind of a brute force approach. Sorry. Mm. Brute force approach. Uh, yeah, approach where I can uh, take one element at a time and I can try to get the sum of all, uh, I can I can take one element at a time and I can try to uh, summing up with the other elements in the same uh, row and then uh, I can try to sum up with the same values with the other row. So the same process will be repeated for the other rows. So like how I can uh, get an uh, output. So shall I uh, write the code or do you want me to uh, op optimize the code for that? Okay. Uh, yeah. No. So to optimize the further code, uh, what I can do on every time, I can take only the uh, you know, optimized code. Optimized code. In the optimized code, I can take only one row and I can use the inbuilt function like sum and I can sum up all the values in the row and I can append these uh, values to the row. So, so this is how we can make this time complexity uh, be big of n and uh, space complexity is big of 1. Space complexity big of 1. So, this is how we can optimize the code further. So, uh, shall I write the code for this one? Yeah, if you can use the proof of approach, uh, the time complexity will be uh, big of n square because I'm taking the every element one by one and then I'm trying to add up with the other elements uh, so it includes the two loops, so it will be big of n square. So, yeah, let me write down the code. Uh, so, first I can uh, define a function uh, to get the you know, sum of sum of rows, uh, that is matrix sum, like I said. Matrix sum. And I can take the you know uh, row as an uh, um, row as an input R. I can take enter matrix. I can take the matrix. Okay. Oh, uh, so this is a function uh, matrix. This actually uh, this function can take a uh, matrix as input as input and take down the sum of value sum of all matrix or all elements in the matrix only then the sum of all elements or values. So this is how we can, this function will do. So as part of this one, I can take the total sum as a variable. Sorry, I can take the total. Total sum equal to zero. And I can take the for, I'll take the each row in matrix. Matrix. I can append the sum, total sum as equal to, I'll get the sum of row. So that it will get the sum of all the elements like one, two, three, or uh, some and four, five, six, some and seven, eight, some. So this one get the total sum of each, or uh, sum of each row, sum of each row, and I'm returning the value. 
total sum. So this is the function. To call this one, I can write the main method. So now, and I can take the input. Something like a matrix. Then we can copy this here, and I can make it. I can make it as a n. And I can result that I can store into matrix sum of I'm calling this function with the matrix as input. So I will get the output. So to see the output, I can add a print statement to the number result of the value. So this is our function. So how should this work as like right? Uh, so first I'm taking the one variable total uh, sum equal to the zero. So for every row in the matrix, so that it will take the first row. And this is second row and this is third row. So it will take the first row and take the sum of all these segments and append it to the total sum here. And on the next time, it will take this is value as a row and it will take the sum of this one and get appended to this sum. I mean, uh, this will get uh, sum, uh, sum up to the first row and the third sum will be sum up to the first two sums. So like how I'm summing up and uh, producing the result. So let me run this and show you the output. So yeah, actually, uh, this should be commented. This let should be commented. That means already can enter. And uh, here it is printing. So, I have to do it. If I'm not sure, i The five and name equal domain, like we have them. Second, extra key. The five and lay. Common name equal key. Name, we can fit, and we can call the special. So we can avoid a certain name. From there. Main in the oh, if if name equal the head, then okay, yeah, push on to an expression. Let's solve some other Python question. Okay. Create a function to add together all combinations of adjacent integers okay. in a string of integers. Okay. Sharing the input and expected output in chat window. Sure. Let me know if need anything. The, uh, 164. That is nothing but void plus two plus three plus okay one two dots two three two three plus one two three okay so if you combine all these things the output will be one sixty four uh, correct okay. Oh. So first we can try to uh, deal with this one. So we need that two loops. Uh, okay. So we can take the two loops and uh, uh, and we can try to uh, use the two pointers inside, and we can try to uh, compute the sum, and we can able to get the output. So this one something like we can write. I know. Uh, that is approach that I'm following it through. I'm taking the two loops, and uh, inside one loop will go to the outer loop where uh, it will take the, uh, it will track each and every element, and inside it it will track the sum elements and sub uh, substring inside the string so that I can get the sum of all the elements. So shall I go ahead with the approach with the coding? Okay, I can code now. So to create a method like string and shit something. 
string narration and it will take the input as like you know uh, the input or input string someday input str we take so the purpose of this function is uh, take the input input string and we'll get all possible string or substrings yeah we'll get all possible substrings and convert to integer not to integer but get a sum of all the substrings so this is the logic that i'm going to write as part of this code so first i'll take the uh, variable like you know total sum and i can visualize with a zero uh, next i can uh, take you know all the possible uh, strings okay we'll try to get all possible strings and get all possible substrings okay so for that i'm going to uh, write up function first i'll take the uh, you know uh, length of input string I'll take the first length of the input chain and uh, I can take the do like or i n range of n. So this is the outer loop which will <coughs> drag the element like one, two, three on the outside. And inside it I can create another loop j in the end of i plus one. These for the, the substring. And we can get n plus one. Okay. From first two, we can go for the last for every element. And here uh, we need to convert the substring to integer and then we need to add to the sum. So we can write something like total sum equal to total sum equal to uh, we can create the integer and uh, input string of input string of we'll take the character from i to z. Okay. i to z and we'll get the sum. So from then uh, yeah we need to check like first it can go for the uh, one. First it can go for the one. And next it will go for the two, one, two, and next one, two, three. Oh, one, one plus two plus one, two. So like how it will get the coordination and it will print the result. So next we can return the result that is total sum. So let's run this one. So if I get to run this, we need to add a name method. Then it equal to ready. Okay. And I'll take the input string. input string equal to 1 to 3 and I can get the result into string additions string additions so string additions I need to pass the input or string input string and the other result will be the result uh, uh, variable so we need to print it out so we have to print the result so this is how it uh, looks like so the complexity wise it will be big of n square in the time complexity and the space complexity is big of 1 only uh, yeah, uh, so this looks, like, uh, this looks good to me, so I'm going to execute. So this is giving the error, like name string additions, it's not defined. String addition, okay, I'll copy this, and I'll use the same name. Yeah, okay, I'll try it out. So now you see, output is 160 code. So this is how we can able to solve this uh, problem. Andy, the knows that looks good. Now, we can 